the third returning character is Kenny's sister, Shannon. She did cope really well with it. She's turned kind of goth, tough chick on us. Her ability is described as black aura, and basically what it means is she can suck the black smoky stuff into herself so that this no longer blocks your path the way it did in the first. And no, I don't know if she inhales or not. That brings us to the new characters. Sven, another jock, whose ability is also strength. And before you say, hey, that's just like Kenny, they do something interesting with it, trust me. He and Kenny are both interested in the same girl, Amy. In both of these games, the girls are very sexualized, but Amy is probably the one most sexualized. She's got boobs that would make Pam Anderson jealous. She's got an exposed thong, and her characteristics are basically that she's really, really hot. Her special ability is seeing patterns and such, including at one point reading a newspaper. I don't know, maybe the other one couldn't read. Then we have May, the dominant of two twin sisters, the other one being June, but you don't control her. She's her own person, you see. Anyway, May can hack using her little cell phone or something. That's another pretty good aspect. Basically, you have to put together the name of someone famous or in some way fitting of the area that you're trying to get into from a limited set of letters. Other than her being a tough chick, there's not a lot to say about her, arguably. And the final character is her boyfriend, Corey, my personal favorite. He's a bit of a daredevil athlete, and he can do Prince of Persia style stunts. He can't do the, you know, running on walls, but, you know, he can climb on ledges. He can lift other people up once he's climbed up sometimes. He can jump from one ledge to another. It's a lot of fun. And it's something that I think the first one could have used as well. When you lift someone up or climb up yourself, or when you're struggling with enemies because some of them might, you know, latch onto you or grab you and try to pull you towards them, you have to press a key repeatedly very fast, otherwise it won't work. This really makes those situations very intense. In general, with this game, I think what they did was basically look at exactly what they had with the first one and just say, okay, this worked, let's carry that over, this didn't, let's figure out how to make it work. I'd say this one goes for less atmosphere, or maybe it's just approaching it differently. In any event, it does work pretty well, it's still a scary game. Not a single one of the abilities in this are useless, although Amy's does feel like they couldn't really think of something good to give her. I don't know, maybe it was to keep her from just being seen as a sex symbol, which she kind of does wind up being anyway. You again get to choose who you're going to control, although in this one, you don't always get who you want. You don't always get who you want, but sometimes you get who you need. Basically, the game does switch back and forth between different groups at times, and you are required to use someone specific at specific times. This is a bit more plot-driven. Now, whether you prefer the complete freedom of the first, or the way they approach it here, you get to try both in this series. Now, what giving up some of this freedom allows for is drama, and they certainly deliver on that. The characters are much more developed, nearly all of them have a character arc, and there's genuine conflict here. Also. You may not like every single of the characters, but at least you can feel that they're there, they're in the situation, they're reacting to it, they're human beings. They still don't allow the villains to have all that much personality, perhaps particularly evident in Quasi Loco, the hunchback of Fall Creek University. I'm kidding, of course, he's completely crazy. The graphics get a huge upgrade. Everything has very rich detail to it. 
The cutscenes are now largely CGI with a lot of expression to the faces, even if the lips aren't always entirely synced. And the in-engine ones aren't bad at all. There's now stuff like slow motion and various filters applied where appropriate. And seriously, in this one, when you get hit in combat, you... F I've played my share of video games over the last 16 years, and I can't think of a single other game where you, to that extent, feel, okay, that dude really hurt me when you get hit. The AI is great, other than your allies sometimes standing in your way and your enemies sometimes not being able to find you even though you're quite close to them. It's really, really good. Enemies might jump around or try to attack you in a couple of different ways, and your allies tend to be very good about helping you. It would be nice if you could make requests of them, I don't know, something in the ballpark of please conserve our ammo, could you please try not to get hit every single time your our enemy attack, heal thyself, or even sometimes something as simple as stay there and you know, follow me. Because on occasion, they kinda go back and forth between the following you and the staying put when they're not supposed to. It is nice that if they find themselves without a good weapon in the situation, they'll ask you to give them one. Cycling through your inventory is a lot easier. You can now do it just using the mouse wheel, so you can be walking as you're doing it. A quick heal key would still really help a lot, but it is a lot better than the first one. Every character has four slots for weapons, and both you and computer-controlled allies can switch back and forth anytime they want. Press of a single button. In this one, you don't have to arm everyone. Basically, the only people who will carry are the two you're controlling. I haven't tried the co-op in this, and the manual is extremely bare-bones. It doesn't even mention it, so I really can't comment on it. But yeah, one of the shortest manuals I've ever seen is like nine pages, and that's including the epilepsy warning, not including the credits. The students of Fall Creek University apparently all engage in sniffing this weird black flower they've never seen before. I guess they don't just say no, which sends them into bizarre hallucinogenic nightmares, try saying that three times fast. And from there, things take a turn for the worse, and these seven youths try to figure out what's going on and put a stop to it. This time around, you can only save at these black flowers similar to the one you smelled. So it's checkpoint saving, and adding to that, you can only save once per flower. So every time you find a flower, you gotta think, okay, do I wanna use it now, or do I wanna save, as it were, it for the next time I might be in this area. The controls are more or less the same. You again move in the direction that you're pressing the key of. However, in spite of the occasional interesting angle, this fairly seldom has you running in the wrong direction, simply because you kept pressing the key, not expecting the camera to change. The camera is also now pretty free in, you know, the kind of 360 degree way, similar to Hitman Blood Money, so, you know, you can be watching yourself walking towards the camera, watch it from one of the sides, or just have it from behind you. In this one, you will miss being able to just direct the flashlight that everybody magically has now, since, you know, many of the areas are quite dark. In fact, when you take control of the camera by readying your weapon, he puts away the flashlight. Controlling the camera like that can be awkward unless you're holding a gun, in which case it'll be similar to the first-person shooter kind of thing. There's again a target lock system, and it again indicates what you're aiming at with that small blue circle. Yeah, wouldn't have been my first choice, guys. However, this time as far as I know, there is no function to switching back and forth between targets. This time the game will end if anybody dies on your watch. I believe this is made by the same people, and again, the language can be awkward at times. The camera fairly seldom works against you. The gameplay mechanics can still be awkward and clumsy at times, but again, what we end up with is a very fun quite scary game. There's a very nice variety of weapons, including a 
including a couple that run on power like a chainsaw and a stun gun, and you recharge their battery at these charging stations that you come by every so often. 